Finally today, uh, moving on with uh, the, Viking, the Viking legacy and, uh, and, and culture. This is the Dark Ages, the Vikings, Viking culture. Uh, and uh, underneath there, if you would put down in your notes the epic of Beowulf, I, I like to stress that it's an epic. It is a true epic, a very long sung poem about the deeds of heroes. I'll have more to say about Beowulf. But it, what I do with my students first is I have them see 13th Warrior. Uh, 13th Warrior. Uh, uh, I can't think of what year that was made. Uh, I can't think what year it was made, but uh, I think there's only one movie called that. It's based on a Michael Crichton or Crichton Crichton um, novel uh, called Eaters of the Dead. But anyway, uh, I like the kids to see that. Uh, not the whole thing. I don't have time for that. But to the end of the flashback. To the end of the flashback. Uh, on YouTube, I looked. It's, it's on YouTube. You can see parts 1, 2, and 3. That would be it. You could watch the rest if you wanted to. Well, it is very loosely based on Beowulf. <laughs> I remember watching it in the theater beside my son, knowing nothing about it being based on Beowulf. At a certain point, I said to him, this is Beowulf. And uh, he got mad. He said, shut up. Uh, he was into it, and he wanted to deny it for a while, but there's no doubt. It's based on Beowulf. Uh, but I don't show the part about th that's more clearly based on Beowulf. What I like for my purposes is the first 20 minutes or so. Uh, it, it, it's, it's an English movie, and, and it follows a, an Arabic character. Well, in the Dark Ages, the world of the Arabs, Baghdad, never fell into uh, uh, barbarism. It was civilized throughout. Northern Europe lost its civilization. And it follows an Arabic uh, speaking, two of them at first, character. And they're, since it's an English movie, they're speaking English, but it's supposed to be Arabic. Well, they run into Vikings, and they can't speak with the Vikings, so they eventually use Greek. Well, actually, in the movie, it's Latin that they're speaking uh, uh, to communicate with uh, these Vikings who should be speaking Old Norse. And actually, in the movie, what they're speaking is Danish. Uh, and uh, uh, I, uh, it's exciting. It's fun. The kids like it. The part where they discount who will be them... Uh, I could almost say it. Der first man. Vem, vem medver der first man, or something like that, is the Danish for who will be the first man. Uh, and they count up through. And it's an, enough like English that if the kids are ready for it, they can hear them counting, although it's very dramatic. Uh, I, I mean, I, you, you have to do this on your own in this course. I, I can't be there to pause it and say, now did you catch that? Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I would ask you to listen closely to that. Uh, and then that part. But then after the one uh, Arab leaves and the one character is left alone, he's the 13th warrior with 12 Vikings, he's in an ex experience called total immersion in a foreign language. And I like to point out to students that I could probably take the poorest student in the school and if he or she were totally immersed in the language, they would learn that language. It would be very painful, very lonely, but eventually they would learn it. That's called total immersion. I'm going to go on a, uh, on a trip uh, to Europe in May uh, where I'm going to totally immerse myself in nine different languages. And I'm not, for a short time, I'm not going to, you know, four of them I probably won't understand. But anyway... He is an experience of total immersion, and it is so clever the way the movie deals with that. And they slowly blend into it until the language matter is over. You just forget about that, and it's all in English now. Uh, uh, and the one other thing I guess I would tell you is a character at a certain point in the, in the movie, he's called Bulwai. Uh, that's Beowulf. Uh, he says to the Arab, you can draw words draw, no, sounds, draw sounds. 
And uh, the Arab at first doesn't understand what he means, draw sounds, but then he understands. That means writing. You can write. You can draw sounds and speak them back, he says. And he says, yes. And uh, he then writes the most important sentence, I believe, in the Muslim world. Allah is the one God and Muhammad is his prophet. And, and I like to point out that he's writing it from... Uh, left to right in the sand, or, or as he does it. Uh, well, uh, that's, you know, I can't uh, really do this for you in this venue, but if you were my students in school, I would now have you look at, at the first 20 minutes or so uh, of that. And I hope you do. And I hope you come back tomorrow. Uh, for the rest of this week, we're going to be in the chronological survey. So I guess maybe I should say goodbye to uh, any students that I have who have only joined the course uh, for the sake of, of grammar and syntax. After this week, then I'm going to teach some Spanish, eventually some French, eventually some German, some Latin and some Greek uh, before the year's out. Alright, I hope to see you tomorrow.